Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. What is going on, people of the universe? Welcome to the half centennial mark of Hop, episode 50. Very special, very surprised that we even made it this far, that me and Kevin are completely sick of each other yet (laughs) at 50 episodes. We probably are, but we work through our kinks in our relationship just for you beautiful people out there. For the content, man. Yes, for the content. We we overcome (laughs) everything. No, um, honestly, when we first started this, I did not think we would, you know, already reach the 50. It's kind of flown by. So, I mean, it's Mm -hmm. we like doing the podcast. We like, this is... Our chance to not only present you people with the Halo news for the week, but it's kind of me and Kevin are very busy uh, in our own respective ways. We are good friends still, though, so it's like our chance to kind of catch up. And that's kind of the perfect setting for a podcast, you know, like it's supposed to be a conversation. It's supposed to be two people kind of just shooting the crap and, you know, talking and stuff. So it's you guys get a genuine conversation of me and Kevin trying to catch up with each other while also... Doing what we do best presents you guys with the news in the Halo universe. So, welcome <laughs> once again, guys. Let's start it out with Kevin. How the hell are you? How's your week been? Week's been doing well, man. Uh, mourning the loss of Eddie Van Halen. That was a Correct. blow to me over the week. Uh, some of the, I play guitar. I've been playing since, what, 2001. Fall, some, fall of 2001 is when I got my first guitar. And listening to Eddie Van Halen, and I was like one of the first people I learned how to play guitar from. And then listening to him play, I tried doing it, I'm like, uh, maybe I'll just play Nirvana for now. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> kind of I, a master. <laughs> but I eventually I got to that point. I actually posted up an eruption cover on Twitter earlier today, just because I was like, man, just going right down nostalgia lane and relearning that solo. And just like, man, that thing, it rips. I love that. But Eddie Van Halen is a like true, if there was a guitar Mount Rushmore, he'd be up there with like Hendrix. And like, oh, yeah, I put him number one, and his brother's not too shabby on the drums either. Oh, yeah, not too shabby either. And then, uh, for gaming wise, though, uh, I've been playing some Halo, uh, if you might assume, just kind of grind out those seasonal, those uh, seasonal challenges, the weekly challenges, and things like that. Yep, uh, I feel like I played something else, and I don't, well, I've been playing a little bit more Warzone actually recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because like the whole Call of Duty hype with uh, Cold War coming around here pretty soon. It's yeah, beta this week. Call of Duty. Yeah, that's Which I'm kind uh, of excited got, for. If you have Comcast, actually, if you like extend any internet, you can get early access to the open beta for the Xbox and PC. So, like the one time being a Comcast person, <laughs> you know, actually pays out and you get a perk for once. I'm happy for you. All the the data caps and BS you have to deal with with Comcast is it's all worth like it for that like Cold like War beta. Like to play the beta two days earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so I got that. So I've been kind of playing a little more Call of Duty. I still love Warzone. I think it's probably still my favorite Battle Royale. Yeah, until it's Halo, pretty good. Until, until Halo comes out with the Battle Royale, I'm just saying. Yeah. Mine is still <laughs> Apex, which I've been playing quite a bit mm-hmm. lately. I lo- I always go back to Apex for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. What, what else have you been playing besides Apex and Halo? Well, that's it. But you do know that yeah. I reached a big milestone this week. Got a flex real that's quick. Right. Yeah, uh, you did. Yeah, I had to... Do reach over again, Lasso. Shout out to Puma for, you know, offering to help me again, even though he already had the achievement. Uh, so <laughs> finally got 100% on MCC. Really happy about that, honestly. And next is freaking max rank on MCC, which I got to start working towards. Which... I don't think you're, that's not like humanly possible. Dude, people told me I wasn't going to reach 152 and I did it in like six months. So that's don't tell, go ahead. Po- the... Oh, Do you it's... know how much XP you need to get that? Yeah, like, I'm halfway there. Is, Mint Bits has been eating, sleeping, and drinking MZC, Dude. and he still like has like three more t- tours to go through. Dude, we have a long time before Infinite comes around. <laughs> All right, and now <laughs> since so? I'm done with my achievements, at least six months, I would say. Now that I'm done with my achievements, that is going to be my primary focus. Is just and once a double XP weekend hits, I'm vowing I'm going hard. Okay going hard that weekend. I'm almost to my gold. I'm about to hit the gold with the, the sword background. So uh, once I hit That's blue, right now. yeah, once I hit blue, then then we'll be good here. 
Um, but yeah, I mean that it personally it meant a lot to me when MCC first came out, dude. I was like, I'm not doing all the achievements. Like I I had done every achievement for every mainline Halo before MCC. Once I saw Lasso and speedrunning were on there, I was like, no way, I'm getting it done. But <laughs> five years without a new Halo title will make you do pretty <laughs> incredible things and pretty not rash do, decisions. So and not only doing it once, but actually doing it twice. Doing it twice, yes, because MCC decided to not give me credit for four missions halfway through the campaign, which isn't even possible on the playlist either. You start the playlist at the beginning or you restart it. So somehow, some way, four missions got deleted out of my progress so we had to do redo the whole campaign over and um yeah i mean it was a really special moment it was cool to it was really cool to hit 152 on stream really cool to hit 100 percent completion on stream uh people dealt with boring lasso streams which i you know props to the people for staying but um <laughs> it's like oh know. snap we died all yeah. the way back to the beginning oh <laughs> died again oh cool <laughs> Yeah, but, but then uh, you get. But I'm sure play. You can probably play through on legendary with like an ease now because you know dude, exactly where everything. Legendary is. just became like normal to me. Like it's just like <laughs> legendary. Okay, that's nothing. <laughs> For me, I'm like struggling. Like I think I tried doing like a CE legendary playthrough on stream one time. I got I put like five hours into it. I only got like halfway. I think I had to like I got to like two betrayals, and I died like at least 200, 250 times while playing. It was a, it was it was it was it was not fun. Yeah, remember <laughs> remember when we were doing the flight and we tried to do truth and wreck and how on legendary and we're like why and we just refused to start the mission over. We're like why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> exactly. But speaking yeah, of which, on. I wanted to talk to you too. I'll talk to you about it after the podcast. Sir. It ain't for the podcast, anyways. Let's get into the news then. Halo Four flight news, Mister Kulex. Yes, we got- Yes, we got some awesome Halo 4 flighty news goodness right here. Let me showcase it right now. Basically, as we do every Friday, we get a development update from 343. Uh, since Postums is on an extended vacation, he's using up all his vacation days. Like I think it's like five weeks in a row or something like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, Sketch has been kind of giving out these different uh, Friday dev updates. And uh, we actually got some information from this one. Yeah. His, his updates are just like, hey, remember there's MTC? Go play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that game. Uh, he mentions that currently, right now, this is on Friday as of Friday. Um, what, what day was Friday actually? Let me just check Friday was the ninth. Yeah, so as of the ninth, uh, it's still in ring one and two testing. Right, uh, it's been there for about two weeks now at yeah. this point, roughly. Which usually that's about that's about how long it takes on average when it comes to their testing. And then it says we may encounter some blockers that delay the move to ring three. Mm-hmm. Which, which I think is always possible. Might... Yeah, yeah, very true. And like it's always the MCC to PC process has always been a very fluid kind of process. Like there is no like set deadline or like you have to be all on the state like it is with like say like Halo Infinite or something like that. Right. And so uh, they do mention about how some new features like crossplay, input based matchmaking, server region selection, the, the three new features that look in the flight for this Halo Four flight might not make it on the release of the flight itself. Right. Um, they say that it might get to ring three for Xbox and PC users. Uh, still targeting the end of next week to kick off the flight. So keep your eyes open for that as well. Right. Uh, for this flight, guys, keep in mind that if you want to play this flight, you can. Like yep. It's open. Everyone who is signed up on the Halo Insider program can play this flight, will be able to play this flight. Yep. And they need to do that because... Uh, LDST saw a little bit of a downturn in participation, and Halo 4 is not exactly the most well liked Halo game. No, especially for the multiplayer that side of things. When you're trying to test out crossplay and input based matchmaking, that's that's the big difference. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, ODST had the hit registration update for Halo 3, which was big, but crossplay is the biggest thing that could happen to MCC right now. That with, along with um, custom games browser, but we also will be getting the regional server selection with this flight. Um, and like you said, it might not make it at the beginning of the flight, but 343 did say that it could come in a mid-flight patch. Yeah. So, you know, one way or another during this flight, even if the flight probably has to get extended, we're going to get some form of crossplay. So remember, if you're on Xbox, you get this you get this flight too. So sign up for the Halo Insider program. This will not be the last flight, but it is the last Halo game for now, they say, uh, Unishek 
posted that in the community update. He's like, last Halo getting added to MCC for now. But then he also put in parentheses, sorry to crush your dreams, all you people who want Halo 5 as part of MCC. So they actually acknowledge once again that people want Halo 5 as part of MCC, but there are no plans right now for Halo 5 on PC. I still have a glimmer of hope that that could really come, uh, especially if if MCC or if uh, Infinite doesn't come out till, I don't think it's coming this late, but till holiday of next year. You the chances of Halo Five coming to MCC are huge, I think. But if we're getting like a spring release, um, maybe maybe not so much because there's still a lot of features that they're working on to bring to MCC. Now it's not really three for three doing all the development legwork. Their partners are doing most of it, like Saber, yeah. like um, yeah, mostly Saber now. I think uh, mm. the other two studios were were dropped out recently, so um, it's really been Saber working with them. So and then they have a production team for mcc at 350 that's a very small team you know most of the studios working on infinite so yeah, this is man, really big majority is working on yeah infinite right yeah now. like 95 percent of the studio is on is on maybe 90 percent is on infinite i'd say even 95 it's a very small team for the mcc mm-hmm. team um i think so they're able to fit everyone in a single picture yeah <laughs> that works that's, yeah. that's working at 343 for the publishing team yeah so uh you know, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to Halo 4 coming to PC to, honestly, it's really weird. It's had a decent population on Xbox One, even though it is not the best received Halo. Um, it's it's always had a decent, more more than H2A for me. I could always find Halo 4 matches. I, I would say Halo 3 obviously is number one when searching for games at MCC, but Halo 4 would be a number two whenever I was searching. Uh, it's been a while since I searched for Halo 4 because I've been on PC lately playing and that's obviously not available yet. But there is also uh, a bunch of content coming with, with the Halo 4 flight. We got Spartan Ops coming, campaign, multiplayer. Um, and like me and Kevin said, the cross-play and input-based matchmaking as well as regional server selection as well as an exclusive PC thing, more video graphics options, which we've been looking forward to for quite a while being able to maybe customize the uh, graphics a little bit more instead of presets like enhanced uh, original graphics or a compatibility mode, basically. Um, You know, we'll maybe have more options like texture resolutions or texture detail settings, shadow resolution, shadow details, uh, things like that. So, and then hopefully they they mentioned this in one of the, uh, the big September update about the interpolation issues with Halo 4, Halo Reach, H2A. Hopefully they get that fixed uh, before launch for Halo 4 so that we can actually uncap our frame rates. Um, and we'll also get text chat too. Uh, they really hadn't talked about it in the big September update, which I was surprised, but they, in, in uh, Sketches update there, Kevin has said, actually like text chat, like enable, disable, and also text chat moderation. So maybe we can set up filters or something or there will be a filter in place where we can still have text chat. But, you know, the stuff that probably shouldn't be said will automatically be blocked for people like me and you who yeah. are recording gameplay. And then we have to edit that out because somebody wants to ruin it or um, streaming, streaming well. is which is impossible to edit out. So that would be very helpful. Um, but still have the text chat on because like me and you said before. It's nice to get into a lobby and be like, oh, are you Kevin Kulex? Like, the Kevin Kulex? Oh, I love your Halo <laughs> content. Oh, yeah, is this? I got it this morning. I'm like, hey, are you the Padman? I watch your videos. I was like, yeah, it's me. It's me. And he's like, oh, cool. And somebody else is like, who? I was like, nobody. Don't worry about and just, it. And he just copy and paste your link in the chat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little self promo. Uh, yeah, like, but, you know, it's nice. Awesome. Those moments are nice, mm. you know? Mm. So definitely, uh, to, I don't know why. Like they, like it went from just like being way too moderated, where like, like you certain acronyms like NPC would be like, you know, asterisked out. I'm like, what? Like why? Or like no big deal or something like that. Like NBG or mm-hmm. it or NBD. Yeah, <laughs> and that would be like asterisked out. Like why? That doesn't make any sense. And then that, then once they removed it in the reach flight, it was just the Wild West and the text chat. And then yeah. after that, it's been just awful <laughs> yes, a lot yeah. of times and so 
Um, but yeah, I didn't mention it all in the September update, but Sketch mentions about the moderation thing, which is I think is what people really want is the yeah. ability just to like have some of those uh, keywords you know you're not supposed to say in public hard really R's ever or or ever really yeah uh, cannot be shown on stream. That would be pretty nice, you know, yeah. or on your videos and things like that. You guys, you know how you want to say those hear, words? Where, where scream into a pillow can... where nobody can hear you. Don't be typing it on MCC, please. Because you know, like how in YouTube you could just randomly see something and be like, "You're done." Yeah. You're like, well, what, what, what would this other person has like done it fifteen thousand times? Yeah, but we saw you do it. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, so they mentioned about we also mentioned about the uh, Kalo Four uh, content, and they have certain kinds of uh, specific playlists that they were, had set up already for this as well. Uh, so we're going to be seeing uh, obviously it's like some improved customization and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be seeing Forge Theater Challenge System updates with uh, season four content as well. So we got like the new Reach armors that are coming in, like GRD Axis. Um, there's like another one too, like chess piece. Like, yeah, yeah, like stuff like that. It's coming in. Um, well, new Halo Three yeah. content for season four as well, which we're presumably Ooh. me and you have been talking about uh, about getting. Uh, more stuff in line with what season two was for MCC for Halo CE. So more weapon skins for more weapons of Halo three and vehicle skins. So that would be very cool. Yeah. I want to show this meme particularly because actually three, four, three responded to this meme particularly. I know it's a meme, but still, so I saw Spicy this memes. the Patrick meme of why don't we just take this skin and move it over here. <laughs> And you think like, wow, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. That'd be pretty awesome to see like the some of the weapon skins that we got for like the pistol and stuff like that, and move it over to uh, the BR and things like that. Well, Farns from the three four three team over there mentioned just give a little winking smiley face to it, you know, mm -hmm. like just yo, a little, like, it's hey, I see you there, mm -hmm. you know, tweeting that out, messaging it out. So it makes me think that we'll see some of these camos, like the gold camo. I know a lot of people wanted the gold camo for the battle rifle, some additional weapon skins, uh, some vehicle skins as well. I'm sure we'll see. It'll pretty much get like the full CE treatment for yeah. Halo 3 as well. You might even see that coming in for Halo Reach on top of that. I think right now, like 3 and Reach are probably the two most popular uh, games on the MCC. Which is a but shame. You still find games like CE, Halo 2, and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And so. Definitely looking forward to that. But I think we're also gonna get some advanced customization along with uh with uh Halo 4 as well, kinda like how we do with like H2A now yep. as well. Uh they did mention different kind of multiplayer game modes we'll be having as well. We have four v four, eight player free for all, twelve player infection, and BTB. Uh they still say they're working out exactly what kind of settings they want for like the competitive stuff for Halo 4 if that's your thing. <laughs> Honestly, um, Halo 4 had once they changed it to the legendary slayer. Um, setting where you started with BR, AR, no armor abilities. I don't think Sprint was in it either. And maybe it was. I can't remember. But definitely no armor abilities. Maybe. And um, that was really good. I actually really enjoyed that because Halo 4's BR is actually pretty satisfactory in my opinion. Um, and the AR is... I just, hate the view. I just hate the view kick though. Yeah, but I, I like... I, I don't know. I liked the Legendary Slayer variant and... Honestly, big team's probably my. F that's probably my favorite big team battle, and in, in the series was really? Halo Force. Yeah, um, hands down because it act and it's kind of broken. Like I, I didn't think I would like it because you know spawning with a plasma pistol and stuff, but you know with vehicles that's kind of overpowered. But it kind of gave me the option to be that person. Like I would just throw my body at Mantis's. Like yo, I have the plasma pistol. I have plasma uh, grenades. I'm taking down this Mantis. And it was always so much fun to me. The DMR is a great BTB weapon. Uh, one of my biggest problems with like Halo 3's BTB, the BR and leading your shots and stuff and how inconsistent it can be. And BTB kind of leads to really frustrating engagements. Um, the DMR just being the beast that it is. I, I had a lot of fun. Like Exile's a great map. One of my favorites in Halo 4 uh, plays really good in BTB. Ragnarok plays great. Like, there's a lot of good. Longbow, I think, was one of them. Um, there's a lot of really good good maps in uh, Halo 4 that kind of get overlooked for BTB. Yeah, the maps for the uh, for the flight will be Adrift, Exile, Haven, Longbow, Meltdown, Ragnarok, Impact, Landfall, Skyline, Perdition, and Pitfall as mm -hmm. well. On yep. top of all that good stuff. Yep. 
Uh, and we also will be getting a campaign playlist called uh, Canyon Combat. So mm-hmm. that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Is that just like the name of a mission or is that like a No, that's the name of the playlist. So, gotcha. okay. you know, like sometimes it's called like Tanks, Tanks, Tanks or, you know, just they come up with different names for these playlists. Tanks, so. Tanks, 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 so yeah. Um, um, also, they got the gig. You got your own. If you participate with this flight as well, you get a snazzy Halo Insider nameplate on top of that. Yeah. Just taking taking part of the whole thing. This one's actually looking better than like the the current in, Insider nameplate. It's just kind of it's like white text only. And it has like a silver background. Clean. It just looks kind of. Yeah. This one's like clean. Yeah. You look at it like yeah. Very easy to read. Insider. You're, you get the flex on those noobs who just sit back and just play the game. Yep. Nah. I I take part of the game. <laughs> I help shape the game. I'm exactly. a QA tester. <laughs> you go. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, basically free labor, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So we got all that's, uh, that's kind of everything going on with Halo 4 flight news. So we should be seeing it probably like either Thursday or Friday. Yep. So meaning probably if like. Everything um, goes well. And probably like the 15th or 16th of October, which is kind of what I predicted. Yep. You know, anything, anything after the 15th, I, I figured in October we'd see it. And we'll probably uh, see a full can... release early November, at the unless something goes terribly wrong, at the latest December. So usually two to three weeks after flight, we're ready for full mm-hmm. release. So buckle up, people. Was, MCC is about I'll... to be complete. I was actually just thinking about that, too. And usually these flights take about two weeks. Yeah, th- it seems like we might have the first week be Halo Four, play the multiplayer, play the campaign, all that stuff. Yep. And probably next week we'll get the cross-play, input-based matchmaking games, or region selection. So you need at least a week of co- playing of that, you know. Yep. To get people testing on it, and then um, usually we get about two, sometimes three weeks after that flight is completed for the game to be released. I'm assuming that they'll probably be pushing for like a November 17th release, since that's yeah. a the last. Uh, not the last Tuesday. It's not the last Tuesday, but like I, I don't, I wouldn't expect them to release the game the week of Thanksgiving. I think a lot of people will probably be like moving out, you know, sure. to flying out for times with their family and stuff like Keep that. Keep in mind that's that's also. I mean, it, it doesn't really affect MCC, uh, but kind of cool too. Uh, Xbox Series X will be coming out that week. On a on a. I think it's the tenth? November tenth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the uh, very next Tuesday after yeah. that one, yeah, you got the Halo Four coming out on the uh, on the on the uh, the old PC side of things. So I'm expecting a November seventeenth release date yep. for that whole thing. Yep, I've been pretty accurate, you know. I'd say, yeah, I'm forecasting Kevin. You know, I have a thousand IQ when it comes to Halo, so I think yep. we can figure this out. <laughs> yeah, we've. I mean, we've we've both said too that it's like it's a pattern. Like usually, unless something goes terribly wrong. Two to three weeks, three weeks being most. It's usually been about two weeks after. Ever since the debacle that was the Halo Two flight and the launch, um, yeah. After that, it's been pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. It may maybe it takes a little bit longer since Halo Three's or Halo Four is never. It's you know, I guess you can look at it both ways. Halo Four has never been designed at all for PC. Um, you know, it's kind of a evolution of a you know a different engine, but they did port over Halo 2 Anniversary, which uses the same engine as Halo 4. And this is 343's own game, so they're probably a little bit more um, familiar with the code and stuff like that. So maybe it doesn't take them as long. So we'll see. But yeah, I would I would say lock it in middle November um, or early December if something goes terribly wrong, which I doubt it. I think they are trying to launch cross-play with Halo 4, so maybe... They push that release back to, um, you know, launch those two things alongside each other in case crossplay for whatever reason takes up more time than they think it's gonna than than they mm-hmm. plan on it. So, yeah, interesting stuff. But like I said, uh, you know, it's kind of big news for for uh, MCC. It's not completely finished, but all the games will be ported over. We're still gonna be waiting into early of twenty twenty for key features like probably custom games browsers might not make it uh, fully into MCC. We talked about it last episode that. Um, they might do a staggered release, so certain games would get like the custom game browser, and then you know apply what they've learned to the other games in the collection. But uh, things like modding, um, more mod- modding tools and stuff like that, they said is pushed back into twenty twenty one. So um, you know it's not completely finished by any stretch of the means, but the amount of content that we've gotten 
for MCC. It's been staggering, man. I, I, I can't mention it enough every time we talk about this. Like, just where we are now, <laughs> like the meme, where we started barely being able to play the game to <laughs> where we are now getting new content, which speaking on the GRD and the Axis, Axis variants, um, yeah, I always pronounce it wrong too, so I forgive you. <laughs> um, the, they did say, Jeff Easterling did say that there is more helmets that will be on the way that were on the cutting room floor. Uh, so that'd be interesting. Like we're getting new content. It's a passion project, basically. Like this is, it feels like it's being made by a bunch of fans, almost like El Dorito, where you got, like this passion project and it was so awesome to get all these features that we haven't seen before. Um, I guess this would be a really good segue into our next section because me, uh, how, how, how many times have I said it on the podcast and just talking like MCC is going to be a testing grounds for infinite things that are doing an MCC will probably get seen in infinite. And let's talk about some halo infinite armor coatings because uh, yes. yeah, we got some news on that along with, Things like weapon coatings that we've already seen, which are part of MCC now. Also, Season Pass is probably going to be part of Infinite since it's a free-to-play game. We saw that first in MCC. Vehicle skins are now confirmed for Halo Infinite, which we first saw in MCC. If you buy the Pelican inbound set from Mega Constructs, it's like $150 friggin' dollars. <laughs> um, Kevin's dead. Shout out to him. Posted it in the Discord. Somebody who bought it, um, they redeemed their token online at Halo Waypoint, and it says, you've received the Mega Constructs vehicle coding for Halo Infinite. So a lot of the stuff we're seeing in MCC is coming to Halo Infinite. We, we've said that several times. So I'm excited for this kind of stuff. We also have the first look at this new uh, render of a uh, Mark Seven Spartan in Halo Infinite. And... What was the name of that coding, Kevin? Do you remember? Monarch, Monarch. right? Yes. And it's brown. It has brown in it. So, I mean, ugh. But uh, even worse. This is purple and gold. What are you talking about? It's No, it's purple and brown. That's not brown. That's gold. Where do you? Let me see what you're looking at. Yeah. It's gold. No. So it's from the community update. That is not gold, be, Kevin. That, that, it's like purple and gold would be like royalty colors, and be a monarch would mean that you're like that is not royalty. gold. That is brown, <laughs> like a light, like a grayish brown. Gold is yellow. How is that even yellow to you? Well, gold is like it's like a like a brassy gold, right? It's like a very dirty <laughs> copper, which is copper is like brown. Well, it's because, okay, when I think of this, I, it reminds me of the UW Huskies, right? And their colors are purple and gold, which are like the same kind of shading of coloring right here. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's also right part now. of a Chips Ahoy promotion. So that's why I think it's brown. It's, it's, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a freaking cookie, uh, a cookie, a ch uh, chocolate chip. That's what it is. See, like, okay, if you look in the stream right here, look at this. Yes, you that's Huskies, that's their logo. That's, that's more of a gold. That is not the same color. The same thing. How do you think that's that the is the same thing. color? That's the same How damn that color. is not even put them side by side, please. Uh, yeah, look up there side by side comparison. Look at this. Look at that that is I, way brighter. There's more yellow in that. That is brown. <laughs> and then that's having colors. You'll see like purple and gold. And light brown. There. Light brown and gold. Yeah, purple and gold. Yeah, that's totally what that looks like. No, that is not a gold. Exactly what it looks like. Look at that gold that you're looking at. Look at that. <laughs> God. Yeah, I have been. I've made like three videos off of this one picture. <laughs> sure. Does not surprise me. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's like, it's like the same thing as like, um, what's the, uh, the big baddie from the raid in Destiny 2? Like the little Callus? Python raid. Callus, yeah. It's like purple and gold color. It's like the same thing. Yeah, that's an actual gold, like I said. Like a very bright <laughs> yellow. That is dark. Unless the lighting is just terrible in that render, that is brown, bro. Hey, they said they, they need to improve the lighting, right? So maybe that's just an issue. Yo, turn RTX on so that can actually look like a proper gold, please. Can we can we get an RTX off and on meme for that? <laughs> 
Oh have you God. seen um have you seen the other things you can get in this promotion though? Have you seen the other unlocks? Yes, there's like a uh, like a chips ahoy thing as well with like a like blue, red, and gold disgusting color well. looking vomit. It looks yeah, it looks pretty bad. But yeah. I mean, it's another option. It's it like is. I got the image right here in my folders. Let me just find it real quick. There's also um, a uh, Spartan emblem and player emblem, two separate things. Mm -hmm. So we will be able to differentiate our player emblem from our Spartan emblem, what appears on our Spartan. Hopefully, I mentioned in my video, hopefully we get a chance to look uh, or actually choose where our emblem goes on our Spartan. I think that would be a really cool customization option um, mm -hmm. to like choose on, you know, maybe even make it bigger, smaller, and put it wherever we want on our Spartan. It would be pretty dope. Exactly, yeah. And um, I want to kind of bring up this one point, too, since they're called coatings, which is weird because I've never really seen a game called their customization of colors coding mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we've seen we've seen skins we've seen camos uh or just colors and camos and things like that but never coatings right um when i was kind of overlooking that monarch coding i know there were like some really intricate parts of the armor that were like in the accent colors yep um if i can i have to close up the image now i can bring this bottle back up again <laughs> But like, uh, like there's this one part, like it makes me think like with the amount of customization that's shown with this image, like you could literally spend like two hours customizing your Spartan, trying to get everything down just right. With the amount of different options that are shown within this image. Uh, but though it just makes me think that, um, like if I could zoom in right here on this image, you can kind of see like, especially like in the arms, within the arms and stuff like that. Like these little strips right here are gold color. This part right here is gold. Uh, like this little part underneath this foot is gold. Like Brown. Uh, stuff like that. Gold. Brown. Uh, this little like art UPS man. right here is gold as well. It's gold. And brown. And then, you, what can brown do you, for you? But then when you actually look at like the Chips Ahoy crazy ugly one. The like, vomit. Look at the different colors. But, yeah, the vomit. Look at the different colors on this guy. Right. Like you have three you have three different colors in just the undersuit alone. Right. And, and the visor, their, like it looks like a colors. like a like you know what like when you're in game design and they use the un like unfully rendered character models and stuff. Like remember watching the sprint on Halo Five where you know it's like the there's none of the textures are loaded in the maps or anything or on the on the Spartans. That's what the, that's what that looks like. It looks just yeah. disgusting. Now I have a theory about the coatings. Like I Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this because this is kind of a big dividing point within the community right now. A lot of people are out crying on um, on Twitter, of course, you know, and Reddit about this kind of thing. So it could very well mean something like shaders with Destiny, which a lot of people don't want to hear. Like I, you know, people are like, dude, I want my regular Spartan customization where I choose my colors and stuff like that. I it could very well be that I'm admitting that I'm I'm not saying I think this is what's going to be, but this is my theory that what you know, just other things that it could be. One, that's kind of what we get into it. Yeah, well. one yeah. is maybe kind of just being able. If you apply a coding, you can basically unlock more customization. So it will put colors where colors aren't previously able to be put. Um, you know, by default. So, like you said, where those accents were. You know, that that's part of the coding exclusive thing where if you're just customizing your multiplayer Spartan um, without a coding, you would just choose a main color and a secondary that maybe that's just your shoulder pads, not your, you know, little intricacies that the codings provide. Also, what it could be, um, because we kind of noticed this with that Chips Ahoy one and the Monarch skin, and you really notice it with the monster skins, even though we haven't really seen any other weapon codings, um, that... Uh, I think Gears, t yeah, Gears Tactics did this, and I want to say Doom did this with their game, but with skins, you can basically make it look like a different material, and with the monster stuff, it looks very chromey, like it looks like yeah, it has a metallic, you know, look yeah. to it, yeah, instead of matte, and you could tell with the Monarch skin, it looks like a little bit plasticky or shiny, but then with the, the Chips Ahoy one, it's very matte and very eh. it, that whole thing mm -hmm. is just gross looking if you walk around like that i i'm gonna kill you online i'm i'm gonna tr target you if you walk around with that skin you're getting targeted all right preferring path with cyber bully exactly um 
So <laughs> blue dress or gold dress, Kevin says. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> this, this is that all. What do you guys see? Uh, I think I actually remember seeing it. I see. I saw this dress in both ways. The first time I saw same. it, I saw it as like what the black and blue or the, the gold and white. And then yeah. every time after that, I saw it as blue and black. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Like I need I that four K monitor white ever again. I don't know what happened. To it. Yeah, it had to be with the monitor or something. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, actually, we we're kind of I didn't mean to cut you off there, but you're on something else. Yeah. So I mean, like I said, Gears Tactics did that with um, basically like you could choose like a uh, carbon fiber look to guns and and your character. You could choose metallic looks like chrome looking. You could choose you know matte. So different things like that. That would be really cool and really take customization to the next level uh, for Halo Infinite. So it would be very interesting to see um, what what it you know what happens if it is. We know Halo Infinite's free to play, so if it is just comes down to shaders, so be it. You know, um, I'm sure we'll get the color combinations we want in some sort of shader. I mean, Destiny kind of built that into their shaders too, where some looked carbon fiber, some looked matte some looked you know uh chromey or, or very shiny in certain parts of the armor so i'm cool with it honestly it that's not that big of a deal to me because if you take halo for what it's been at face value it's always just been choose your two colors and that's it or third there's a tertiary color too sometimes in some halos um yeah and that's it that you're stuck with that if we do get shaders or something like that that provides more customization now i'm for more customization and really changing the look not just the colors, but the actual look of the material, I think, is a really cool feature. So, personally, more customization options, the better. Like we were just talking about with MCC, you'll probably have an option to turn it on and off if you don't want to see that kind of stuff. You know, that's up to you, whatever. I don't think so. I think you'll probably have to see it. They got to sell those microtransactions right. somewhere. You got to be able to flex and show it off the colors and stuff like that. Yeah, like, for the people that don't want to see it, they can just turn it off. I mean, you don't maybe, think they would give players that option after introducing that in MCC? Well, MCC is a little different because you're trying to like respect the legacy and trying to relive that same experience you had. Oh, like, and you're not trying to respect the legacy of Halo Infinite by <laughs> rebooting it and calling back to the old games and trying to win back the fan base and blah, 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 blah. Maybe I mean, in, maybe in um, ranked multiplayer, you could turn those on because they are very distracting and you're sweaty, sweaty people don't like mm -hmm. seeing that kind of stuff so maybe that will be an option you know i'm i'm all That's for true. options actually that actually just made me think about that like most of the game modes you're playing are like red versus blue so how you're really going to be able to show up like that what that armor coating that you paid for right or that and then you but then you don't play free for all it's like how you're going to see your spartan you know everything's going to be either red or blue you know yeah that's interesting also kind of look at it that way as well um because like i think i was kind of going on what you're talking about i think i think like these what armor coatings mm -hmm. they would specifically call them coatings i think it's supposed to be kind of like a, a a full set and that's like what it looks like right and so it's like a like a like a destiny shader in a way yeah but i think we'll still have like regular customization for your coloring on your spartans yeah um i was looking at like the mug i was like i searched stuff while you were talking about the uh mega construct stuff right here if you can see, like, there's uh, two different Spartans here with, like, different color visors that we've seen before and uh, using, like, yellow and gray or black, whatever, as, like, the coloring. But you see how, like, very, you know, overall color, like, big blocky kind of coloring to it, not that detailed. So I think maybe you'll be able to color individual armor pieces as mm -hmm. a color and just in general. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to, like, like I said, when I pointed out, like, those little intricacies of the coloring, they kind of really give like a nice accent to your Spartan. I think you have to, have to like get it in like a, you know, a, a, a armor coating in like a, a battle, a rumored battle pass or some microtransaction that's going to be available for you to pay for as well. Yep. Um, it's just, I think that's kind of, I think it's, so it's going to be like a little bit of both. It's going to be really tough though, because uh, for the general consensus, I would say for microtransactions in your AAA games is that we've come to the general consensus of, monetize the customization don't touch the gameplay right battlefront true tried touching the gameplay and we all saw what happened there they nearly lost their license with disney right <laughs> right and so with the bat with the amount of backlash that they had and so it's gonna be a really fine line that 343 is gonna have to ride when it comes to giving players enough customization to make it feel like they can make their own spurn 
while also making these armor coatings something that would be you'd something you'd want to buy yeah you know so it's tough to ride that line right there so it's blood especially with like the long history of customization the history that halo has had right for this to be like the first game to like not give you full customization could be a little controversial especially with the halo community definitely i mean uh <laughs> Three for three needs to apply what they learned from Halo Five, which personally I we all hate microtransactions, but it is a reality in today's gaming, so I accept that because I am a gamer mm-hmm. and I still like to play video games. Um and Halo Five, I didn't have a problem with the microtransactions of Halo Five because I wasn't that big of a fan of Warzone. So um, you know, mm-hmm. I'm more of a competitive kind of, you know, a try hard player that enjoys arena and loved the arena of Halo Five. So that never really affected me, but at the same time, um, you know, we got free DLC, which was awesome. You know, that games like COD for the longest were charging for all three retail DLC, like season pass and microtransactions. Um, you know, other games went in different directions. Okay, you pay retail, but it's free for season pass, but you can pay microtransactions and that helps. Uh, you know, they did something cool with helping with the HCS prize pool for, um, for Halo 5 with the microtransactions earned. So I thought that was really cool, kind of giving back in a way, um, helping support the game. But at the same time, um, I don't like unlocking stuff just exclusively in loot boxes, which we know Halo Infinite won't have loot boxes, but some sort of microtransactions. And for what, like you said, Battlefront 2 did was shady and disgusting. Um, but we can also do another EA game that has, if my dog would shut up, um, another EA game, I think Apex Legends did it really good. Uh, we were showing exactly the percentage of stuff you can get from certain boxes and stuff like that. Just take it over. Let, we'll let him stop barking because my wife's walking through the door, so he's going to bark. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, definitely a fine line they're going to have to ride when it comes to doing microtransactions properly within Halo Infinite. Right. Halo 5 kind of had a bit of a, gr- it was a very gray area when it comes to its microtransactions because it wasn't pay to win, but you did get weapons and you did unlock weapons and things like that through the loot boxes. Yeah. And if you went to the Halo, or went to the Xbox website, you could buy a pack of Nord Fangs. Right. Which is another thing. So it's like, but it was that, basically course, a pay to win, but it was, it was Warzone, you know, so it's not like yeah. people cared that much. It's more of a casual playlist. Yeah, and so it's like it really, really pushed limits to pay to win on that one, especially yeah. for Warzone. Uh, luckily that the packs were able to be unlocked in a fair speed to where it didn't really yes. feel like it. And that's um, another I, good balance you have to have, you know. And that's kind of where I was about to go before my dog just went ape, <laughs> ape on, on my wife, but... You know, like, that's where they have to strike that balance. Like you said, you bring up striking that balance. And another balance they have to strike is being able to earn stuff in-game. And even maybe some things being only earnable in-game. Like, that needs to be a thing, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, not just buy your weight. Like, you know how demoralizing it was? I mean, it's, in the big scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. But to to unlock Heli- Helio Skrill and MCC by completing all the legendary campaigns and then just have that be thrown into loot boxes afterwards by 343 kind of sucked man because you know you want to flex that on people like yo look i went through something difficult in the game to unlock this now look at my cool armor you know like i love stuff like that and i really hope infinite brings that back to go back to halo 3 the katana you know like you had to do something for that and it was a cool thing to show off and you couldn't earn it any other way and i i get some people don't have the time to dedicate that much time into a game you know people have full-time jobs or just don't have as much gaming time as as other people but that's that's you got it that's part of the game dude like you you still get to play the game but if i'm putting in more time and putting in more effort then yeah i should get something cool like you shouldn't just be able to buy it so um uh, hopefully they do strike that balance as well i think it's also just like a bit of like personal pride as well like you complete yeah. a challenge yeah, you get definitely. to put it on your character and be like you look at that armor you're like yeah i did that i feel proud that i was able to pull that off kind of thing you know yeah. but yeah that's uh that's the armor coatings though there's we got one picture but there's a lot to talk about that one picture you know? yeah definitely there's a lot of different things to bring up about it so especially with all the stuff that we know so far when it comes to armor customizations so far in halo infinite and uh but yeah so i think we maybe move on to play us updates i think yes sounds good so Mm -hmm. 
as we always do uh, at the end of every podcast episode, we bring you guys the MCC playlist update. So we do have a playlist change for MCC. They rotated in Griff Ball, rotated out Recon SWAT after, you know, the uh, honeymoon phase of ODST and the weapons coming to Halo 3 multiplayer and that exclusive playlist. Um, but they also added Recon SWAT into the rotation with um, lower weighting than usual, which means you shouldn't get it as much as standard SWAT, but it is rotated into the SWAT playlist. So if you still want to get a crack at using that sweet, sweet ODST silence pistol, you could somehow get it, you know, in uh, regular SWAT and, and, and test your luck there. Now, they also did, which I didn't know about this, and I was doing some XP grinding this morning, increase XP uh, for the metals in ODST Firefight. So maybe we'll have to grind some Firefight because I'm, I'm enjoying ODST Firefight. Honestly, it's, it's, it's fun. Been pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's way much more of a challenge than it is for exactly. uh, Reach. Exactly. And I recently realized that seasonal challenge where you have to like complete thirty or yeah, thirty match made games, it means like to the end complete, not just like participate in. Mm. And so I've been Is grinding it? that one out recently. Yeah. Are you sure? Because mm-hmm. sure. I don't think I've, I've completed thirty. Uh, I have all the challenges done, but I don't think I completed thirty freaking things. Well, is is that one for is that the one that's specific to ODST? Yes. Specific okay. to ODST for a seasonal challenge, it's complete. I, maybe like, I did control. the arcade version for that because yeah. it's much quicker. Um, yeah, than... I did. Yeah, if you do an arcade, it's much easier to complete yeah. all the rounds. And so yeah. then I was just doing that a lot last night, and I was just kind of getting through it way faster than I was like in regular uh, firefight. Which, by the way, I had the most epic firefight game last night. It was epic so awesome. stories. Yes, there was like a wave and a half left. We have no lives left. I was the last guy on the on the battlefield. And you didn't playing. choke. It was in reach, and like the last two rounds oh, were like okay. straight, just nothing but like you know elites and chieftains, you know, mm-hmm. that come at you. And I was able to solo it on my own, carry the team to victory. Nice. I think I had 197 kills in that game, and everyone else was like 60 to 30. You gained you gained three some uh, subscribers from that from that carry. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, I gotta look this any, guy up. I was like, any gifters in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> No, but like that was like I I was very happy about that. That was a personal victory right there. And I don't think I've ever played Firefight that well. Usually I just kind of minus can confirm Kevin is go. not that great at Firefight. <laughs> Kevin, stop running out uh, Endure Challenge. Go check out the video, guys. We yell at Kevin a lot in that video. We love him, hey, but, I, but we yell at him. I, but once I went to the Stoop Kid strategy, Stoop then Kid strategy for the changed. win. That's it, baby. Yeah, so just stayed on the stairs and never left. And then we, uh, we ended up winning. So you don't win. want me to cross this imaginary line? No, Kevin, you are not allowed to walk past this line. <laughs> so that's our update for MCC. Um, if you guys watched the last podcast episode, well, you would know this. But if you're new here, welcome, first of all. Second of all, October is a celebratory month for Halo 5. It is the birthday month for Halo 5. Five year anniversary for Halo 5. And the whole month global double XP is active, which means double XP for everything, all playlists. So right now uh, is Forerunner Slayer that rotated in for Shoddy Snipers as of October 8th. But coming up on October 15th, Rock and Rail is coming in for Forerunner Slayer, which that's is the game mode. That's the game mode, people. Like, usually featured game mode is double XP anyways. However, um, you know, like I said, since it's global double XP, everything's double XP. But still, Rock and Rail, if you get a decent, even if you get one squad mate with you, that's decent. You can basically finish a game in about three minutes. And the XP gains are tremendous in Rock and Rail. Tremendous, okay? Look at my small hands, even though mine are small. Um... It's it's an amazingly fun playlist as well. Like time will fly by mm-hmm. uh, playing Rock and Rail. It is definitely one of my favorite playlists in Halo Five. We will also get Warzone Assault going live for the weekend on, on October fifteenth, so you guys can play that. And a reminder will remind you on next week's episode as well. But if you log into Halo Five on October twenty seventh, which is the actual birthday of Halo Five, which is funny because my wife's birthday is the day before, so I remember ignoring her for her birthday weekend when Halo 5 came out. So October 26th is my wife's birthday. October 27th 
is Halo 5's birthday. If you log in that day specifically, you will get a free rec pack of uh, the Greatest Hits customization pack. So, oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, we got to get... mention it right here, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mentioned it last week, Kevin. Pay attention. Come on. Pay attention. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. I I am the playlist captain now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that is uh that is your playlist update, guys, for MCC and for Halo Five for the 152 grinders out there. Let's get into the end of the show, guys. So Kevin, if people are looking to find your content and want to subscribe to your YouTube, follow you on Twitch, on Twitter, things like that, Instagram. And even if for whatever reason you want to go to a dead Facebook page, where can they find you? Can't tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Facebook.com slash Kevin Kulex. YouTube.com slash user says Kevin Kulex. Twitter.com slash Kevin Kulex Halo because my previous account was stolen by Nigerians. Uh, Look at me. Instagram. I am the Kevin Kulex slash... now. It was literally well stolen by Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the email was so I had to make a new account because the whole thing there uh, instagram.com slash Kevin Coolings post a lot of uh, I, on the Instagram I do like to post like screenshots and different kind of like highlight clips and stuff like that that don't usually work out too well like on Twitter or on YouTube and stuff like that so some unique content going on up over there I actually just posted my cover of uh, Eruption by Van Halen on there as well so you can get to see some shreds and I'm not talking about lettuce on the guitar. Jesus. <laughs> uh, you can also check out our podcast on Spotify and Podbean yeah. if you don't want to waste your phone battery while listening to into our amazing voices right here. Links in the description down below. Pat, where can we find your content on the internet? Well, thank you for asking. So, um, just any social media link you prefer uh, besides Facebook, because I don't have Facebook anymore. So youtube.com slash the Patman Gaming, twitch.tv slash the Patman Gaming, Instagram.com slash the Patman Gaming, and you guessed it, twitter.com slash the Patman Gaming. Um as well as uh you know, I, I gotta do a better job of using Instagram. I keep saying that and I don't do it because like a lot of my family follows me. I, I basically converted my personal account into because I don't want to keep up with two separate accounts, into my Instagram account. So like, my mom follows me on there, and I don't want to post all this freaking Halo stuff because she used to be like, oh, my God, you're so obsessed with Halo, and I just don't want to hear it. So, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll finally just, you know, get better on Instagram. It's actually, but I do... really, it's actually pretty easy to manage it, too. Like, yeah. on Instagram, if you, if you attach your secondary account, you literally just, like, click on your name, click on the second account, and boom, you're there. Yeah, it's I, actually... I, still, I, don't, I, don't, I can't be bothered, Kevin. I can't be. That's bothered. what I did. Yeah, I put all my I tr- converted my personal account to the the gaming account. Yeah. and made a new account for my personal stuff, but just like families and friends. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been episode fifty of the Halo Outreach Podcast, or Hop for short. We appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for listening and or watching. It will be up on demand if in case you guys missed it and you want to see our lovely faces. It will be up on both of our respective YouTube channels, and we hope to catch you guys on the next episode. Until next time, goodbye, Spartans. J-Fab.